Coming up on Unpacked. At the time, I said I was weighing 191. Did anybody ever tell you you're beautiful? I called them the day I got an offer in the new job. I'm like, I'm coming for surgery. What I had is called, simple terms, it's gastric bypass. I've lost 100, 101 kgs. I had to lose weight for people to like me. I was still amazing. Yes. The world just didn't realize it. Many people don't know a thing about weight loss surgery, but it happens right here in Mzanzi. And today's guest is here to share her story. Let's unpack. Leaho Maruma is a 32-year-old woman who was born and bred in the Northwest. From as early as 10 years old, her issues with weight led to her developing a low self-esteem. As these feelings lingered through to her adulthood, she made the decision to start her weight loss journey by getting gastric bypass surgery four years ago. This is her story. Let's unpack. Leho, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Take me back to your childhood and your upbringing. What, uh, what was your weight like at the time in terms of what you can remember? Not just what you saw, but how you felt in your body. Okay. So I think I'm generally, I was born like quite heavy, like mm. from birth, as my mom tells me. I was like a 3.8 from birth. Mm. So that's quite a big baby. And then over time, I think from a weight perspective, I've picked it up from my dad's side of the family. Mm. And um, so what I remember, you know, when I was about 10 years in primary school, I mean, that's where you really start feeling the difference when you're in, in high school and also because... I grew up with my sister, who was much smaller than mm. me, and the comparison was always there. But only when I'm older, I, re I look, reflect, and I'm like, oh, so this is why this was happening. Mm. So generally, I was, at 10 years, I was quite a big baby. You know, couldn't really do, in primary school, I, I, I had to literally just be the girl that could just look at people doing everything else, but I could not do what I wanted mm. to do. Could never do netball. I want to be center because I felt like I'm cute for center, but yeah. even wanted me to be a goalkeeper. Mm. Like, no, I don't want to be a goalkeeper. <laughs> I want to do something else. They want me to do shot put. Why must I do shot put? Mm. Kind of thing. So you always just push back, you know, and I'm from Afrika and there was a thing called drummies in Afrika. It's the biggest thing ever. And at the school I went to... Share like, with us what that is. So drum major, it, it's like oh. the it girls thing in my yeah. game. That's primary mm. school where it's all those hot, skinny girls were in that thing. My sister was in that thing and she was a sub leader. I remember I used to audition for that thing and obviously I'd always get a no into mm. being part of this big thing. And eventually I would stay until they practice until six o'clock at night from... One o'clock, I'd be sitting there. I knew the routine from start to end. If someone dropped and fell in that team, you were ready. I was ready to step in. But the teacher would never, ever let me in because I was the fat girl. And when I think about it, that's the only reason, you know? Mm. So I think that was my childhood. You know, it was always um, difficult. It was not nice. Like when I look back, just how people treated me because of weight. Mm. Family, you know, when you're with your sister, you hear everybody ask, well, they ask her. You never get asked. Mm. Like, Ojolem, it's almost like oh, she's fat, she's not supposed to go anyway, mm. you know? But only now, when you look back, you're like, oh, okay, it's the first time in my life people ask me, who am I dating? No one mm. ever, ever asked me that, mm. you know? So those are things that you, I remember growing up, but it was always difficult from that angle, you know? Who was in the household? Was, was their mom and dad in the household? No, so we grew up, mom, me and my sister, we grew up with my, our grandmother. Mm. So our parents stayed with our grandmother before my mom okay. got married. So I lived with, we were together. So it was like a blended family kind of thing. Mm. So my mom and me, my sister and her mom, my cousin's sister and her mom. So we're actually cousins. Yes. Um, and she was top student at school. And I was like scraping through life. When my mom goes to parent evening, LO, mm. you know, I was that child. Mm. But never would I get, so at least I didn't have anything to hold. I wonder if you're going to be a big girl and at least you are holding on to the maxi. Yes. You've got a voice. I didn't have that, you know. Um, so, so we grew up in a home like that. My grandmother always tried to encourage, and my mom always tried. Uh, my mom, I think, also she was indirectly. My family also, I think, they had pressure from the world where everybody, well, 
le go mo kima yang le jisa ngwana eng you know mm-hmm. and she indirectly also put pressure on me like lose her weight i was always on diet like what was the conversation though that you would have because let's say you came you know home from school not feeling great about yourself because they wouldn't let you play the position you wanted to play um did you ever have a conversation to say yo i i actually can't stand how i feel in regards to how everybody treats me because of my weight no i never had a conversation with anyone because i think already at home there's that thing where you lose weight you know so it just felt like quatwana like if i'm going to go home and and say how people treat me at school it's going to go back to what i'm eating okay lose our weight you know and yeah. you know black you know like families then they just mental health is not a thing was in the mm. thing it's going to be okay lose our weight like you know it was never um I don't build there. Like you are me. So there was there was always, no sensitivity. Yeah, so there was always your amazing oh wanna go up up because I think there was the one thing that I had like gap up, you know. So everybody just held on to le go uba tata kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it was never um um oh uh, how do we make it work? Love you no know, lose weight. Did anybody ever tell you you're beautiful? Growing up. Yes. Uh, I don't think so. I think my family told me, but I've always thought they just told me because they had to tell me. Yes. <laughs> and my sister's like really beautiful, you know. Mm. And so I think she always got it from strangers. Mm. Um, me, not so much. I don't think so. Mm. I was told I'm beautiful, but because I had to. But I don't think it was like I'm told now. Yes, I understand what you mean. There's a difference. You mean there's a difference? Yeah. So as you got older, uh, what was happening physically? but also emotionally with how you related because now at some point you become a young adult and you can have conversations with yourself and not necessarily be surrounded by adults saying things to you so still growing up um high school happened i went to an all girls school and that was an also very nice um i came in and i was the fat girl again i remember there was a uniform situation i didn't have uniform i had to wait for my uniform to be made or something like that mm. and i was wearing um home clothes and i understood out so why you know wearing home clothes there's no size at the uniform shop you know i had, they had to make my uniform there's another girl that was also chubby that uh, her and i held each other you know she was my girl because mm. we went through it together Uh, but people used to tease, you know, and I think in return, because now I can snap back and I'll be like, uh-uh, when I, I'll get receipts on you. And I'm a receipt girl, so I, I brought receipts. And also I learned very quickly that when you are fat uh, and you just say to your teacher that she said I'm fat, you've won the case. Mm. So I ran with the fat thing. Even if someone didn't say I'm fat, if you teach me about something else, I'll say, but really I'm fat. Therefore. And therefore the teacher... Case close. Mm. So I had to use it to my advantage. And also I think to a certain extent, I also learned how to kind of be mean sometimes because people were mean to me. Mm. And my way of relating with people was also snapping back. Uh, and when I look back, it was because of, I was always treated like that. So in return, to protect myself, I had to equally be like, hey, mm. you know, that kind of thing. So that's how my, my high school life went. Um, I think carry on like that varsity, Varsity was also very similar, exactly like that. I was very loud. I always always had to overcompensate. Mm. I've been the loud girl. Been I, the funny girl. Being, always making a joke about yourself, mm. which is the one thing I do not miss, that in a room you have to say, yeah, I'm fat, and to make everyone feel comfortable, you mm. know? So that you get it out the way. So you get out the way because you know everybody's thinking about it. Mm. And that used to irritate me so much. High school, varsity was the same. I was then I got obsessed with having pretty girls around me, mm. right? And with pretty girls around me meant that all the guys must be nice to me because by the time I had a very nice and if you're not so nice So you're the me, friend and not the girlfriend. Yes, I was always the off. Oh, darling, I was always the friend. Mm. <laughs> Can't remember ever being the girlfriend ever. I mean, mm. my dating life was a mess for the mm. most part, you know. Um so it became that I had the pretty girl that I'd control when I'm young and you must go through me if you mm. want to talk to the girl. So that was my strong point because I was, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, so that was varsity. I had a very good friend um, who allowed, I just always had to be a clown, man, to make everybody happy. So mm-hmm. that I got tired, got mm-hmm. tired, got tired. In terms of, you know, you mentioned that you were always on diets, right? Did they ever work for you? They did. I mean, I was on a, a lot of diets. I was on a diet. There's a one year you put a pin in your ear 
And then you lose weight. What? And then you stop getting hungry. I remember we ran to that thing. My mom, oh, my mom, she, it. <laughs> she was going to the most. Every new diet was there. What is this? We are there. And that one, you clip in your ear and then it's going to make the cravings go away. I was very young that time we went for it. Uh, every diet you can think of, every program, dietitian, I used to count food, weigh food. I did all of that. Mm. All my, and I mean all my life, mm. I did it. So diets was my thing, like weighing food, running, gym, all of that, was everything, drinking three liters of water, all of these things I did, mm. yeah, mm. to lose weight. Until I realized that actually my weight issue is more deeper than food. Yes. Yeah, but only when I got into this process of surgery did yeah. I find this out, yeah. So when did you even get introduced to the idea of weight loss surgery? Because for many, many years, it's the stuff you'd see on TV, like, oh, Dr. Phil, okay, they had this person, or Oprah Winfrey had this person. When was it first introduced to you? My mom, once again, my mom called me one odd day, I was 24 years. There was a show on SBC2, my mom then takes me, watch the show, watch the show, um, I tune into the show, it was a health show or a talk show, something mm. similar to this. And this person was going through the surgery. Uh, I was 23 years old that time, many, many years ago. Um, and then the doctor was explaining the process, what it is, and you know, it was very small. I think at the time, even the doctor was still growing in South Africa, mm. you know, especially with black people. Um, I think a lot of white people knew about this mm. thing. Um, and then the time of 24, I mean, my mom also, I was not too sure why we were looking at this because it's not like we can afford to do it. Mm. So, yeah, well, okay, and then, you know, mm. and then I watched that thing. And then I never forgot it, though. I never forgot that this white doctor that can change my life. Yes. You know? um, do you remember what it was they said the surgery is about? As in not now knowing the information you know, but back then, what were the things you took away from what the surgery can do for you? They just said weight loss. You can lose weight. Mm. That's, and that's, I think that's what my mom, I think also, that, I mean, my mom, you can imagine for her also, she was also equally wanting me to be happy, you know, mm. because she was also probably tired of people always saying things to her and people maybe laughing at me through mm. her. I mean, I think, yeah, I think she's got, to, and so when she heard that moment, she was just like, go for it, but she knew she couldn't impose it. I needed to want to do it, you know? And financially at the time, I think we also couldn't afford it, her and I anyway, mm. so it was not even an option for me to do it. So I let it go, it was 24 years, I was 24 years at the time, let it go, it never ever crossed my mind ever again, never did any research. I, well, I mean, after that I started doing a little bit of research, but I didn't have details, but well, that show came on once and never again, I never mm. heard of this person, of this doctor uh, that did the surgery. So that carried on. And then that's, that's how I got to knowing about this process. So when did it become an option to you? It became an option in 2018. I was staying in Alsprayed and I was at my biggest that year. But before that, I, I mean, we had been traveling with, with my friends. We had gone to Cape Town. I remember, you know, I used to cry in the corner and no one knew we'd be out. And I'd be so sad, you know. And uh, I, I was always sad because of how everyone treated me, you know, mm. and not my friends, but just how guys were to me. I was the girl that, oh, child, I'm big, eh. mm. you know, and I, I knew I'm not that, you know. Mm. I knew I was more than just the girl that, just how people treat you when you're really overweight, you mm. know, it was just, it was sad. I remember on the 31st, on New Year's Day, we were having lunch with my friend. I cried so much and I said, I really want to lose weight. Mm. I don't know where to start because... You've tried I've everything. I've tried everything mm. and I don't know what's the problem. You know, it's like, Jima, eat. If it, obviously, that's what people will say, Jim, eat. Oh! Next time someone says this to me, I'm, I swear I'm going to die, kind mm. of thing, right? But my... I, I just, just said, you know what, I don't know. Like, I didn't have any... At the time, surgery is not an option. Mm. But I'm saying I'm going to try it one more time again with weight loss. Mm. And then I went again for another program. Went for this program. Lots By of, program, you mean like a dietitian tells you what to eat, eat and you probably are weighing the food and doing whatever. I did all of that. Yes. Did all of that. Lost weight. Um, lost a bit of weight. But when I would eat normal, and not, I'm not talking about eating like I'm overeating. When I ate normal, mm. I still gained weight. Mm. 
I mean, when I, I was living in Nelspreet at the time, and that's the year I was like, you know what, I'm in Nelspreet, I'm going to make this year about weight loss. Yeah. I saw a program, went to a dietitian again in Nelspreet. <laughs> I was focused, you know, I was weighing every week. I'd cry until I couldn't cry anymore. Mm. Just how my life was just so sad, you know, sad because of weight, how people treat me. Like, and the thing about weight is that it's not the problems of me, it's how everybody makes me feel. Mm. You know, sometimes I can be overweight and yes, there's health issues, there's, I'm not comfortable, Manuela Butoku, your back is sore. Those are, they're there, granted. Mm. But it's that people place you. They decide what you are. Mm. People have decided for me what I am. Why do they decide such serious things about my life? Without just taking you for who you actually are. Yeah. And I say this strongly because of how people are to me now, having had lost weight. It's a big... When they talk about pretty girl privilege, it's very real. Mm. It's a very, and weight is a very big factor in how people treat you. Mm. You know, so um, I learned that. Uh, and after, after that, that whole thing, now I lost, didn't lose weight, lost a bit of weight, went through a little bit of a, now I've had it, came back to Joburg. Remember, I got a new job, got an offer, and I'm like, I called them the day I got an offer and the new job. I'm like, I'm coming for surgery. Mm. It was uh, October, called them. They said first appointment in November the 6th, I was there. So maybe a share with us, because obviously you went and called to say, okay, I'm doing this thing. What are some of the things that they told you in terms of criteria? Because at the end of the day, it is a surgery where you go under general anesthetic and maybe also tell us which one it is. Okay. Because in the weight loss surgery space, it's evolved over the years as to what um, uh, doctors tend to do and what they are allowed to do versus what used to happen back in the day. Okay, so... On that day, in October, I called um, a doctor in Waterfall and I was like, I am, I want to do this. They asked me how much do I weigh. I remember at the time I said I was weighing 191. Mm. And then... The, and that was your heaviest? That was my heaviest. Yes. 191. Um, my knees are killing me. I'm 29 years, but like, literally, mm. like, everything's just heavy. And were you finding... Um, very small tasks to be exhausting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, small tasks were ex ex exhausting. I was finding... Like tying your shoelaces. I couldn't even tie my shoelaces. Mm -hmm. What about that thing of wearing a heel on the side and you must tie it? Yes. It was not my thing. Even I don't buy heels that require me yes. to tie. I, unless there's someone who can tie for me. Yes, yes. Um, I didn't do that. I was a kitten heel girl mm. of just arriving with a kitchen here and I'm happy, mm. you know? And I love clothes, but I just always had to take stuff standard everything because mm. it's what fitted. Mm. It was not what I wanted, mm. you know? So I called the doctors and they're like, no, come through. Uh, on the 6th of November, I go, they tell me the criteria, you need to wear a certain amount, you need to be in a certain medical aid plan because I was not going to pay it cash. Uh, medical aid plan and you need to be in this medical aid plan you need to be in the biggest package of mm. this medical aid plan and this medical aid plan was like really expensive mm. so I'm like oh my god how am I going to afford this you know so then I'm like you know what? I'm in a new job it's fine I'll be broke but I'm sacrificing everything for this moment mm. then I tell, start my new job and I tell them that I'm going to be in this medical aid plan I'm alone I'm paying almost 8,000 rand 7,000 rand medical aid wow. plan alone so I Go see the doctor. I arrive first. So day. this is like assessment. No, no. So first day is not necessarily assessment. By the time you get there, they tell you on your first day, you arrive. The do you see the endocrine, including the endocrinologist, who's the one that leads the, the lead doctor. Okay. So she leads the whole surgery, and then she gives direction to the whole team. So you see about seven doc, six to seven doctors. Mm. So when she starts, she says um, she gives a form, blood form. She needs to run blood of everything in your body, uric mm. acid, thyroid, so she can understand what is the issue of mm. why you're struggling to lose weight. And because I understood at the time, she explains to me that uh, when you get to a point of going for surgery, it's, and when you don't lose weight naturally anymore, it becomes an issue of absorption, um, um, malabsorption. Your mm. body it doesn't absorb. Even if you eat healthy, you still gain weight. Mm. And because you've got other fundamental issues of thyroid, uric acid, mm. iron issues. But these are things that a, a, no, a normal dietitian, well, the ones I've been to, don't run those kind of tests mm. to guide you and say, okay, you've got uric acid, so how are we going to combat this uric acid by giving you this kind of food? Mm. Or, or iron. And iron is a problem in women. Mm. Most women have iron, anemic or have iron issues. 
and iron contributes immensely in weight. Mm. But nobody tells you this. Uric acid co- contributes immensely mm. in weight gain. Thyroid. No one tells you any of this. So you just keep on eating, eating, eating. Sometimes you're eating a green salad. Does it, green salad works against something that mm. you don't, you know? So she runs a full blood count on, on everything. Then you... Then from there on, she comes back and she prescribes. So I remember when I when I got my results back, she said I had ulcers in my stomach and I had an under overactive thyroid mm. and I had too much acid in my body. Mm. And that's why breaking fat was something that could never happen naturally yeah. or through diets. Mm. So she puts me on treatment in the while we waited, the three months waiting time before surgery day. So on the first day, though, she already tells you when is your surgery. Mm. So I knew my surgery was in January because it was November, so I need to work on this thing end of January, beginning of Feb. Okay, cool. Then uh, we part ways, run tests. Then I see a psychologist, I see a dietitian. They start putting you in a program. And I think it's important, you know, that you're highlighting that part because... Um, those assessments are necessary because the surgery is not just a quick fix. Yeah. It actually is a major operation that's happening where they're uh, either removing parts of your stomach or there's different ones or putting a band, um, whatever the case may be. So they do have to take you through a psych assessment to see if you can qualify. Yeah. So what are they trying to establish? So I think from, from my realization, it's, it's, it's harder, it's not a quick fix. Yes. At all. It's actually harder than natural weight loss mm. because it affects your overall well-being. Mm. And this is how your life is going to be. It's mm. not a, I'm doing this and then I'm done. No. Mm. It's it's literally, you mentally need to be ready for it. You need to be, there's a lot of, uh, then you see a psychiatrist, the way they will, a psychologist, to kind of get your story of where you come from, with mm. weight, your relationship with food, what is the fundamental issues, how your upbringing, in that way, they're able to understand how they'll give you better support. Mm. So that is the psycho, psychometric uh, assessment that they do. Then from there, from then on, we we go and I go home. Then they give me the whole test. I, I keep, I'm always in the hospital because I'm going for ECG lung mm. test. So they must check your lungs if they can function. My heart will it be able to handle. Um, the surgery, mm. my lungs will be fine. And then also, um, if you've got sleep apnea, a mm. lot of uh, overweight people, I think people generally have is it the apnea. Is, this, is it the sleep apnea or which one is it? Sleep apnea. Uh, sleep apnea, okay. Yeah. And what does that mean? So sleep apnea is, so when you're overweight at some point, you die. Like, and you wake up. Yes. So if you've got sleep apnea, before you go for surgery, they cannot go for surgery without the doctor monitoring. Because mm. st- when a teacher comes, they, don't, they need to know, they need to prepare you with the, the um, they give you a machine. I didn't have sleep apnea until today. That I remember the anest- anesthesia was like, there's no way you don't have sleep apnea with that weight. Mm. And, but I don't. I really yeah, don't have sleep apnea, yeah, you yeah. know? Um, so they give you a machine that you have to keep using every night, every night for four months and post-surgery. Yes. To, to help you your body to get used to it. So when you, so seemingly it seems like when you're sleeping, mm. at some point you, you stop breathing mm. and then you wake up. So because of weight issues yes. that your heart locks down or, yes. I'm not too sure about it. Like yes. I don't want to mislead people about that yes. because I'm obviously I'm not a doctor. Mm. I'm telling you what I know, yes. but medically it would be great if the doctor would also be able to explain it, you know, properly. Then from the sleep apnea part, we ECG lung test, we go for blood test, we go for mental health test. It's a long three months waiting period. They must monitor how you're eating. Are you losing weight on your own? You need to lose a little bit of weight on your own. Mm. How come you, they, they want you to lose a bit of weight on your own? Because they want to be able to be sure that you'll be able to carry this eating right thing. Mm. Even post-surgery. Because post-surgery, it's not like they've only done this part and now you can continue with your life as you like. You have to practice prior to the surgery. Absolutely. So from your understanding, what did the doctor say he's going to do in the, in the operating room? So then, you, so the endocrine does, she, she's, not, she's not the one that does the surgery. She leads it mm. and there's a surgeon. Mm. So the surgeon, then you move to see the surgeon and the surgeon explains the whole process. So what I had is called, simple terms, it's gastric bypass, but... In scientific terms, it's 
below pancreatic diversion mm. with the dangerous switch, mm. right? And it's a restrictive and malabsorptive surgery. Mm. The restrictive part is where they cut 70% of my stomach. Um, and then the malabsorptive is where they fix the intestine and how food flows. Mm. So that's where the biggest issue is that people think going for a gastric band, for example, mm. And I, as far as I know, my center doesn't do gastric band. Yeah. They think a gastric band will make you lose weight. It probably will make you lose weight. Mm. But they're not fixing the absorption part, which yeah. is the biggest issue of weight. Because also the band, the band's job is similar to them reducing the size of the stomach. But in your case, they actually cut it and reconnect. And, yes. They remove a piece and reconnect. The band just blocks so that you feel full quickly, but they're not dealing with, like you said, the absorption, the absorption issue. And I the got issue you. is not the food. Mm. Remember, the issue is not... It's not, of course, portion control, definitely. Yes. So portion control is taken care of from the restrictive part. But even if you eat small food, you can eat the chips every day, for example, mm. and you just have two, three chips, but that's not still right. Mm. The absorption part is the process of how food digests in your yes. body. And gets absorbed. It gets absorbed. Yeah. So that's what I had to build up and carry to diverge. This is the biggest surgery of um, engaging my parts like in, in what the doctor does. So there's Rue and Y, there's a BPD, and then there's BPDS. So BPDS is people that are as big as me. So in terms of fixing the absorption part, yeah. um, what exactly do they do for that? Because the, the one about the size, we understand they cut it, they, they join it together. What happens, happens with the absorption part? So, so there's a thing called a digendrum that connects your small intestine. Yes. Then food goes to the large intestine. Yes. Right? So in this part, they remove your bowel, mm. like your bowel, which crushes fat normally, mm -hmm. right? Um, so when you eat anything fat, so normally as a, before the surgery, if you eat anything fat, your bowel will help break down fat. Mm. In this case, there's nothing to break down the fat. Mm. You eat fat, it comes out as fat. Yeah. Right? Because there's nothing that helps out. So they make it shorter. I'm not a doctor again, like I mm. said, make it shorter. Then it moves directly to the small, to the larger stand, and it comes out. Mm. So food stays shorter in your mm -hmm. body, mm. and so they've actually reduced the length that food needs to travel. Yes. in your body. I got you. I got you. I in like simple you. terms, I like. You. <laughs> I absolutely like people like you. That's exactly what they do. Yeah. So they shorten the whole the whole process of how should food get digested. So obviously, it means that some vitamins are not a lot of vitamins are not absor mm. absorbed from food, so I take a lot of supplements, like to supplement the lots of supp natural supplements that I get from a food. So mm. I go, I take multivitamins, I take um, IVs, uh, IV drips, yeah. I'm on IV drips every first, first day you're there every three months, I think, and then after that every year. Because, and if you don't take your medication like you should, you will feel tired, you will. But it's not like a major thing. I mean, it's like you're going to fall apart. If you do fall, I don't have a child. I had the surgery without um, a child. You can still fall pregnant. It actually helps a lot with pregnancy. Because mm. most times you find that overweight people struggle to conceive naturally yes. because of weight. Not that it happens for everyone, but I know quite a bit of people yes. who've done it that have had surgery immediately they fall pregnant. So from what I understand with the procedure that you did is that not only do they test if you can lose weight on your own, but maybe a week or so before you have to be on a liquid diet to prepare your stomach, but prepare you because once that procedure is done, you can't suddenly go to eating food. Yes, absolutely. So the liquid diet is important because I think for the surgeon, he needs to have your stomach as smooth as possible mm -hmm. because the surgery is done through laparoscopic. So they don't open your stomach, they put in, so I've got like incisions yes. around my stomach. So they, they put in, uh, so they put in a camera through your mouth and then he's cutting it like that through mm. this this is uh, laparoscopic. So he needs his tummy to be as soft as possible. It's almost like utensils that he's using, yes, right? Yes. To enter small little incisions that go in like tubes. The cutting happens on the inside and he's looking on the camera. Absolutely. Yes. That's exactly how he does it. So he will do that and then he will also then um, cut the stuff. So, but if the stomach is not, if you've been eating, it makes it incredibly difficult for him to. To, to see how, where you at. So he mm. needs your stomach to be super smooth. There's, look at that, it's two weeks before surgery mm. and post-surgery as well. 
uh, you liquid dieting, but you post surgery you can barely eat. So after surgery, um, you're just having iced tea, mm. and you having because well for me I was I was hot. I, my stomach was I felt like I just want cold stuff. So I just mm. been having ice cold water mm. and iced tea. In terms of you know obviously you've gone through this whole three month process waiting period appointments. Um, did you ever have doubts? Before going in, there was nothing they said that scared you. No, I was like, I don't listen to people. Like, no, people have theories about everything. So I'm like, no, I don't listen to anyone. Like, I literally, literally, when someone talked to me, I was like, you don't even know what you're on about because half the time people don't know. And yes. in South Africa, it's not a big thing. Like, yes. there's no reality show about it for, about a South African person who's done this. Mm. There's no information about it if you don't search for it. Mm. And, and literally, a lot of people don't even know where to go. Mm. You know, so. So when someone spoke, they were telling me about that American show. I was like, okay, mm. you're talking about things that you don't have information on. So yes. no, I'm not listening to that. And I was just so excited, you know. If you ask me what happened in the three months, I probably can't even tell you what happened. Mm. I was just, I don't want to be thin. I kept on saying that, I don't want to be thin. I don't want to be thin, guys. That's all I want. You know, so when I went for surgery, I just, I just want to be thin. That was the only thing I heard. Mm. How, how, how much are you going to lose weight? You're going to lose, lose about 60% of your weight. Wow. Calculating already, oh, I'm going to, which store buying this? That mm. was me. So the surgery happens. Yeah. You've done your two weeks liquid fast. Um, now you're in recovery. What does recovery look like? So day of surgery, it took about four or five hours. Mm. It was a long procedure. Um, then we moved to ICU. I'm in ICU for a day or two. Mm. Um, then after that, I had to, next day you're walking. Mm. There's no time for baby, baby crying. And also the doctor is so thorough in how she does things. She's, she's extremely thorough. I've mm. I have never seen anything like that in my mm. whole entire life, where someone monitors you to the T. Even before, day before surgery, the week of surgery, she gives injections that you must inject yourself to thin, thin your blood. Mm. And if you're a woman, she gives you medication to stop your monthly your cycle. cycle coming. Mm -hmm. So the time, week before, she's running another test to see where we are we ready for this thing. Mm -hmm. Mentally, where you at. We, the week before surgery, we still see her. And if she still feels like she's not too sure where you at, surgery can be cut mm -hmm. after all of that. Um, so she's very on it. On the day I arrived at hospital, everybody, and at, at um, Nedcare Waterfall, it's like you are... Like you are at class when you arrive mm. there, you know. So when I got there, did surgery, after surgery, um, went to the ICU. When I came out, I remember I was crying nonstop, you know, because mm. I was in pain. But the, the doctor came, the anesthesia came, she came herself mm. to come see me. So it was literally like people, were, they care about you, you know. Mm. So then after that, you are discharged, you go to the normal ward, you're monitored for over three days. She come, the, the surgeon sees you every, uh, about normal doctor routine. So mm. he'd come see me, they'd give you custard, everything sugar-free, dietitian comes, the psychologist come, like everybody's just coming to mm. see you. Um, surgery, healing time was, was that at hospital, then I went home. The hard part honestly came in where now, obviously, when I look back, I used to, when I'm sad, I, I'm able to get a chucky. Yeah. To soup my So head. now you can't do the emotional eating There's thing. No emotional anything. And explain to us why. I mean, I understand that your body basically can start to reject certain things. Yes. In the form of bringing it up. Yes. Um, what happens when you would eat something that wakala? Yo, you, how khala you will puke until you can't believe your life. Anything that you go, even if you eat it slow, mm. if it says it's not supposed to be there, if it's too sweet, you're in the bathroom. Mm. You're throwing up. If not, you're having diarrhea. And mm. that's what they call damping. Mm. So damping is where food, because your body can't digest, can't break food. So you can't break anything that's processed. Mm. So alcohol, you can't, you can't drink alcohol for the first six months surgery, mm. but after that, you can, but if you drink one or two glasses, you are dead drunk. Yeah. Like, well, about that bad. You know, so you have to literally drink in, in your own space kind of thing. Mm. Um, sugar, it doesn't process, my body doesn't process sugar to this day. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so there are days where I want to have sugar. So 
if I have sugar, I, I know I'm going to pay for it in at home kind of thing. I actually remember, you know, as you're talking, I'm remembering that actually the first person um, that I remember watching speaking about weight loss surgery was Randy Jackson. And at the time, he was an Idols judge. It was this very, very big thing. And he said, people think it's just a quick fix where you get surgery, the weight drops. But he's like, I was, I would drive and have to pull over on the side of the road to vomit. That I would crave. So the surgery forced me to actually face other demons that I was using food to cover. So what demons did you have to face? Sure, that was, that's exactly it. You know, like, yo, to going back to that time, yo, you face the demons. Like, what he's saying, your dumping can be so bad that you won't even make it to the toilet, hey? Mm. Like, it can get that bad where... If, if you had alcohol and something sweet, you won't get to the toilet, my darling. You are going to miss yourself. It wow. can't be that bad. So um, the demons I had to face, I mean, I think I had to dig deep on why did I do the surgery? Mm. You know, and I realized I, I, I realized of the people pleaser. I realized I lived to make everyone happy, mm. but never myself. Uh, from friends to family, I realized that I compromised myself for everything. I tolerate anything. People would do anything. Mm. Remember when people do anything with you? There was me. People did anything they wanted to do. There was never no. Mm. So a no to me felt like, oh my God, but I need her. Mm. Like if she, because if she walks away, what's going to happen to me? Mm. You know? The mental battle of realizing that you, you, you lived your life for people. Like mm. everything was about people. And and if I am to assume yeah. or, you know, assess from my perspective, is that when you don't feel good enough, you tolerate nonsense because you're afraid that if you say no, you're going to lose people. Absolutely. Mm. It was exactly that. Like, I used to be scared to lose people. I mean, guys would update sh shady guys, mm. you know, and they'd ask you for money and you'd be like, if I don't give it to him, he's probably going to leave me. Mm. You know, and you wanted to keep people. I over, overcompensated for everything. My friend, let's do this. And I know I don't want to do it, but I yeah. do it. Yeah. You know, um, I used to, when people tell me, when are you this person? I used to believe what people tell me I am. Mm. You know, and I knew I wasn't that person. I struggled mm. with mental issues a lot. Like, I, cry, I remember this one day I came back from work, uh, six months post-surgery. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. I remember I opened the door and I literally screamed and cried because I was in so much emotional pain. Mm. Because I kept on asking myself, did I do the surgery for myself? Was it for me? Mm. Or was it because of everyone has been telling me I'm not amazing, I'm not enough, I'm... You know, it was just, it was painful. Like, I don't... I always... Every time I put a post on Instagram, I say, I wish people can experience life from my eyes post-surgery. So, so here's the question then. Yeah. You were 191 kilos when you made the decision of what you want to do. I'm sure you're a little bit lighter than that uh, pre-surgery. Three months down the line, because the weight loss at the beginning is drastic, how much did you lose? No, it's actually not. Is it not drastic at the beginning? Well, when for, did... for me, it wasn't mm. at all. The first year, I was still very heavy. Mm. Um, I lost a lot of weight year two and three. Mm. That's when I dropped like this, mm. like how I look now. But year one, I was still a chubby. I mean, mm. you could, there was a difference, but I was still, I wasn't thin. Like, I yes. wasn't, mm. like, what happened? No, I wasn't right. But also because I, I ate, I wasn't going to starve myself. Like, um, because I also can see, I saw that if you, do, if you starve yourself, you will look you're not going to look healthy. Mm. And I, I knew I don't want to look at healthy. I want to look... And I was not obsessed with numbers. I said mm. to myself after this surgery, the emotional pain I went through, the mental pain I went mm. through, they're trying to please people, they're trying to live for people, they're trying to be liked. I am never making weight an issue. It's not a topic that doesn't exist in my world. Mm. Mm. So post-surgery, I've never... Like, I go on the scale because, yeah, I have to go on the scale, but I'm not like... I need, I'm not You're not obsessing, yeah. I want to feel good. And yes. feeling good is me being able to walk longer. It's me being able to go to Golden City, to be on an anaconda, on, the snake, on that anaconda thing. And when I went now for the first time in my whole life, I was actually able to sit in a um, king, one of the ride. Games, the ride, mm. and, and it could fit. Like, it could actually fit. And mm. before that, it wasn't able to fit. So I could, I was holding the bags because all my friends, 
want to do it. And you couldn't go on the I ride. couldn't go on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So um, post-surgery, it's how many years now post-surgery? Three years. Three years post-surgery. Yeah. How much in total have you lost? I've lost 100, 101 kgs. 101 kilograms. Yes. That is a lot of weight. It is. When you see your clothes from before, yeah. holding them, how does that make you feel? So I don't do that. I've never done that before and after because I feel like it's just, I was still amazing. Yes. Just the world just didn't realize it. Yes. So I don't do before and after at all. I don't do that whole, I'm fitting in one thing. Yes, oh, yes. No. the one leg thing. No, yes. I've never done it. Yes. Uh, all my clothes, I give them to people that I meet that are overweight and they want clothes. So I've never done it. Honestly, I've never done it. Not mm. because of this, any issues with doing it, but for me, I it, it hurts me that I have to do that to be happy. So no, I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just hated how also as a big girl, you know, you always had to overcompensate. Like I see, and I'm not saying this anything wrong, but I see how girls, chubby girls, will be naked on Instagram. You know, but but it just nothing wrong. If this is what works for you, but it's and then they'll write, dear body, what what, and I know it's because. Sometimes, I'm not saying for everyone, mm. sometimes because you want to say, I like my book, I'm happy. Mm. You try to convince us. Mm. I'm not saying they don't. Some people do really mm. are happy, you know, but I get in boxes daily from girls that are said to 200,000 followers telling me they want to do the surgery. Mm. And but these are girls that sit there and in the public, mm. you know, mm. but in box, they like, and I understand because I was also that person. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that, but I, I hate how we always have to oversell your support for a fat girl. That's not you know, nice. Understand. You know? yeah. In terms of now you see how people treat you differently, mm-hmm. how does that make you feel? Do you feel like Neling Nyata before? Like, oh, I'm actually still the same person. You just are seeing me differently and now suddenly treat me better. It's sad. I think it makes me really sad. That's the one that it makes me... And I, I talked to my psychologist a lot about it. It's very sad that I had to lose weight for people to like me, genuinely. Mm. Well, I don't think they genuinely like me, but I mean, they like the idea of me, clearly. But mm. I haven't changed. I'm still the same person, you know? Uh, guys that never liked you will inbox you now. I'm like, <laughs> I want you right then. I'll tell them... I'm still the same person. Mm. So it's sad. It's very sad, you know, that people treat you differently, you know. Uh, the, you the, did you treat yourself differently? Because, and I'll tell you why I say that, um, sometimes mm-hmm. when you don't feel deserving of good things, you hold yourself back maybe from doing things you've always wanted to do. So you have people who be like, when I have money, I will. When I lose the weight, I will. Did you hold yourself back from doing certain things that now the weight is shed and you're like, actually, I could have lived like this before? Yes or no? So yes, no, because if I tried to do something, it was always, no, you can't do it. I got you. So I was told I can't do it, but I knew I wanted to do it. Mm. You know, like it starts the driving story, like I said. Who decides that a driving girl must be thin? Yeah. Why, who decides a ballerina must be thin? Mm. Why must why must they be thin? Like mm. why can't they be given in marriage? Like you're good and you can do it. Mm. Mm. So yes, they no they, but yes, I always use a But I was always around boys with mm. the hacking with weight part. You know, it was never really about um friendship. I, I mean, you don't know what you know mm. until you I'm I'm here. So now I know better and I know what I need for myself mm. now. So where are you today? Especially Emotionally, your relationship with food and your relationship with your body? So, emotionally, I still see my therapist um, a lot. Haven't seen in a while, but I saw her a lot for the last two years. Um, I'm much more in control now with my emotions. I'm much more understanding that I too deserve. Um, I understand that. I am the girl that I think I am. And I also understand that I am never letting anything come stopping me from living my best, living my best life. And my best life, um, and weight honestly has given me, losing weight, I, I, I would never 
ever trade this feeling. The dumping that is there, it's very hard. Mm. The vomiting that's always there, it's difficult. Dating Gaspar Pass is absolutely difficult because you've got dumping issues. You've got diarrhea issues. I still can't believe that that continues. I honestly thought that, you know, the diarrhea or the, you know, not being able to make it to the toilet before things just release and messing yourself, mm. the vomiting, that you reach a point where your body becomes accustomed. It doesn't. So if you eat bad, you will mess yourself. Mm. And there are days, you know, I, also I'm not going to say to you and say there are days that I don't eat bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. I do. I do have days where... I'm letting my head down, my head down, I'm mm. drinking whatever I want to drink. And I was never a drinker, mm. but because I used to sweat. And I think, I feel like, I got this thing of sweating, man. It just mm. doesn't work. So I just decided that I'm not doing it. But now I can never drink. But And then I get tipsy, which is, oh, it's so lovely. You know, something that I never used to go through. And then, but you will dump, you know. So mm. if you meet someone that is, someone that ends up with you must really like you. Because there's those issues that come. Mm. That I think I'm so surprised. Like, I genuinely thought that after a period of time, I'm assuming then if you became completely strict and rigid, avoided sugar, avoided all the things, those issues wouldn't be there. Yes, but there are, like most days there's that. There mm. are days where I will avoid. But if you can have one small piece of chocolate or one sip of Fanta orange, for example, mm. dumping is there. You, you will have a smelly anything. Wow. So no matter how small the sugar is, anything that's... The body just rejects it. It rejects it. Yeah, yeah. So yes, if you're completely strict, this is how you mm. live, you eat clean 100%. Chance of you having dumping are uh, almost not there, but I don't know anyone who can say 100% Never had no, because you're human, so you can have your moments where you feel like having something. Yeah. In terms of your weight loss journey, I mean, it's ongoing. Yes. Where, wh- what is your ideal space you'd like to see yourself at? Do you have a goal weight? Do you have a goal body type? Or you're like, whatever my body does, I'm going with it. No, no, no. I, I'm definitely going for more surgery. Um, so go, once you've gone for surgery, you get so obsessed. It's crazy. Mm. Um, so I'm going for more surgery. I'm going for a full body surgery now, where they contour my body, give me new boob, give me a bum. Mm. Definitely going for that. Do you have excess skin from all the weight yeah. you've lost? I do, but I don't think it's bad. Maybe mm. I'm consoling myself. Someone else if was here, he'll say I, it's bad, but I don't mm. think it's bad. Like, I think it's... It's, yeah, I mean, you can tell I've lost weight. Mm. You can tell there's a little bit, especially around my stomach. Mm. But it's not like you kind of mm. thing, you know? Mm. And I'm, I think I'm an honest person myself. It's not too bad. Mm. But I am going to remove all of that. So that's yeah. my biggest thing. I want to have like a more contoured body and perky boobs is something that's very important mm. and, and mm. nice, a nice bum. Yes. Girl, I respect you doing what is working for you. Like I was saying to you earlier, like the great thing is your energy and your personality that has been out there shining. It's a pity that society is such a way that they treat people who are not of a certain body type a certain way. But I'm hoping that you are feeling like you're living your best life and the world finally sees you. Yeah, I think I think I am living my best life the way, my way. Mm. Um, I, I'm happier. Mm. I am less people pleasing. Mm. It's still difficult though because I still like think, oh my god, if I if I'm not nice to this person, they're not gonna be friends with me, and I need them. But then I remember, no, I actually don't need them. Mm. I'm actually okay being alone, and I st- I str- I used to love having people around me because I had issues with self. Mm. So first time I live alone now, and I'm like I'm home. I can watch Netflix. I'd never ever play love songs ever. You know, my sister's always so surprised. Like you, like I I, I was always. I, I do really. Mm-hmm. Like, I was, because that was my way of, I don't want to deal with my reality. For the first time, I can sit down and I don't cry about anything. I used to cry about everything. If you yeah. say to me, I cry. But now I'm like, tears seldom comes out. Mm. It takes a lot for me to cry. But I realized I cried because I was in pain. Yeah, yeah. I was in pain. It was not what someone said to me. It's because I was battling with the pain inside my heart. Mm. So I'm happy to be finally free. Mm-hmm. and live life my way. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Leah. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me.
Living her life her way. I hope if you're not aware about weight loss surgery that today's episode has enlightened you to the fact that it is available. Yes, it's extremely expensive, but don't think it is the easy way out. Do your research, do your homework and find exactly what is right for you. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. I decided I'm going to take the leap. It was tough because there was a lot of people that were dependent on me, but I felt either now or never. Oh my goodness, if I get this promotion, it means I'm gonna have less time for my art. That's when I knew that, mm, I don't think I see a future here. This is not about money, you know, as such. It's about purpose. much for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.